Um. Well, there's more M2, right? I think, yeah, okay, here's one. Is that it? Alright, that's it for M2. Let's start on M3. I'm assuming there is an M3, right? M4, M5, M4, M5, M4. 4, 5. Never mind, apparently there is no M3. Or at least it's not available to me. Alright, let's go with M4. Motherhood Credit Act. Uh-oh. Sounds like another oppressive amendment thing. Actually, I don't think that's an amendment, but whatever. You know what I mean. Political thing. Nobility Stipend Amendment. Uh-oh. Oh, God. It looks like this is just full of... Meritocracy Act. Wait, day nine. What about all the other days? Hmm. It looks like these are just full of horrible, probably oppressive, political things. M4. The new count. Yeah, this is just a bunch of records office. <sighs> this is not going to be good reading. <laughs> this is not going to be fun reading. I can guarantee you that. I wonder if I should be doing this in such a sort of linear order, just going through the blocks. From the beginning M to the later M's. Whoa, 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 what is this? Pale Bride. There's something about the Pale Bride? There's something about Hyun-A from before the year zero? Was that about when she was put in... Hold on, okay, sorry, I'm gonna have to get rid of some of these. I wanna read that. And... Or should I? Maybe I should get to it when I get to it? I want to read it now. Hmm. Hmm. No, I'm going to take it. Okay, I want to know what's going on. Okay. Commit to extraction. Let's go. The most extravagant bribery. Chief Counselor. Motherhood Credit Act. Nobility Siphoned Amendment. Meritocracy Act, Day 9. The Pale Bride. Okay, I think I'm going to have enough power left to extract more. One more time, I think, before I'll have to recharge and wait until tomorrow. Literally tomorrow. Unfortunately. I have to wait, but it's okay. Maybe I'll compose you another song, Yane. Actually, I probably won't. But I might. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. It depends. We'll see. Okay, uh, let's start with the Pale Bride. Even though that's not in order in any way, I'm really curious. And she's obviously going to have something to say. Ah, that's me. That's me. That's me. She's writing about me. I know. Uh, is this... Who is this? This is the first time we've read about this person. Click, okay. Holy shit, she's got... Damn, she look at that. Kind of weird, okay. It looks like she's doing science with style. She's wearing an Austin science uh, lab coat thing and she's obviously in some sort of a laboratory. But she also has crazy frizzled hair and looks like she's wearing a scarf, which makes her look like a make her look make ugh, God I can't talk makes her look like a badass scientist. But the marks on her face and the fact that her hair is so frizzled also makes it look like maybe she just something just exploded in her face, like she mixed a couple of ingredients that she shouldn't have and had a lab accident. She looks kind of badass, and she also looks kind of like something went wrong. Anyway. Okay. Well, I guess the story sort of came true after all, huh? Well, we'll see. Uh, note uh, translated as The Pale Bride. Is there... Oh! That's me, Kim Hyun-ae. Look, there's even a photo of me. 
So that's what she looked when... I guess, is that... That's gotta be before she was put in the capsule, right? And that's... I think that's the capsule right there, the, uh, the stasis chamber. Gosh, she looks so sad. And why wouldn't she be? I mean, she's dying with a terminal illness and is about to go inside of a stasis chamber that's going to take her away from her biological parents and she'll never see them again. I mean, oh, Jesus. Now that I think about it, that's extremely sad. But, uh, yeah, it definitely looks like her. Just younger. Instead of sick daughter, for consistency's sake, the ship sailed on... Wait. Oh, oh, I'm reading this wrong. It's translated as the pale bride instead of sick daughter, for consistency's sake. The ship sailed on getting that one right a long time ago. The ship sailed on getting that one right a long time ago. Yeah. We saw how that went down. Ah. Oh, so this is from Kim So Yi. Don't know who she is yet, but I'm assuming she's some sort of a scientist. Apartment status. Bed is made. A few dishes need to be washed. Takeout containers need to be taken to garbage. Floor is clean. After two years without any sort of breakthrough, and dozens of appeals without any form of acknowledgement, I believe I've discovered the evidence that I need to provide definitive proof. There has always been a bizarre family legend of an eccentric but brilliant ancient Earth-born ancestor who saved his terminally ill daughter through unconventional methods. In some tellings, she is a ghost that lives in... <laughs> in some tellings, she is a ghost that lives in the computer. In others, she, she is sealed away in an alternate dimension to return when the ship has landed on a planet with fresh air. Well, I guess that, that story sort of came true after all. Yes, it did! A ghost that lives in the computer Xiane, you're the ghost in the machine, except you're not much of a ghost. A bizarre family legend of an eccentric but brilliant ancient Earth-born ancestor who saved his terminally ill daughter. Hmm. I learned the truth from my grandmother. Oh, let's click on this. No photo. At the New Year's gathering. In reality, she does exist, and is merely in cryonic sleep in the family storage closet. Okay, so at this time, she is in storage. <laughs> She's in storage, that sounds weird to say, but yeah. She's uh, in cryonic sleep. Okay. So apparently there's legends about her, and, well, she actually does exist at this point in time. This is not before or after, this is during. I caught a glimpse of her at that gathering, and realized that she was the key to proving... My thesis. Wait a minute. The key to proving my thesis. Did she... Did she take her out of... Out of stasis? Because she needed her for something she was doing? And in doing so had no regard for the fact that she was sick and was going to die? If the help wasn't there? Or... No, wait, no, no, that... Hmm. That couldn't be, because she was... Was Hyune let out of stasis before or after the year zero? She could have been let out before, but maybe her memory was erased, because she is an AI that could do that. I don't remember. She's probably talked about this, but I don't remember. Hmm. Anyway... Key to proving my thesis. Today, I returned with my husband to their home, having offered her a great... Uh, a great grandchildren-related re bribe in order to have access to the sleeping pale bride to run tests. My theory is, as she has not consumed food or water or breathed air in nearly 1600 years... Jesus. If there has been a significant increase in ambient radiation in that duration, she should be significantly less affected by it. Her chamber was sealed partially by glass, so she may not be completely unaffected. But I anticipate the difference will be readily observable. The technology involved in her preservation seems extraordinarily designed. I can believe that it came from the same level of Earthborn Brilliance that built our ship. Earthborn Brilliance? Finally, someone who acknowledges that my real parents were smarter than people later on were. Yeah, no kidding. 
Yeah, uh, what did she say? Didn't she say that her... Uh, I don't think it was her parents, but wasn't it her, like, her great... Her grand... Wasn't it her grandparents or something? That actually had been Earth natives? So she had some stories from Earth? Like, directly from the source, not from stories passed down through the generations, but actually directly from people who had been on Earth? Or something like that? So anyway, if her parents obviously are not far removed from the beginning of the trip, which is when technology seemed to be at its peak, then yes, it would look extraordinary to people later on after technology had gone pew down. Well, my husband... Hello. You look like a... I was about to say you look like a scientist, and then I realized that's more like a chef's... Whatever you call it, chef's... Shirt? Coat? I, I don't know. Anyway, looking good. I like the little mustache. A little bit of flair. Cool look. While my husband was gracefully distracting my grandparents by listening to their stories, I set up in the storage closet, attempting to open the capsule labeled Kim Hyun Pale Bride. Ooh. Attempting to open the capsule. That doesn't sound safe. Does she, does she have no regard for Hyun safety? Huh, that's a good idea. Wait, do you mean that sarcastically, or, or what? This action was easier said than done. A separate, hacked-together computer was regulating the capsule. But the label, the labeled switch for opening it was non-operational. It took a significant while to figure out what I needed to connect a second... Uh, to figure out that I needed to connect a secondary battery, and insert an override key to enable the switch. It did not help that I was very... trepidatious to fiddle with Earth-born designed technology that was completely over my head. Accidentally causing damage with my clumsiness would have been disastrous. See? She figured it out. Why could my adoptive father be as smart as her? The warm-up cycle took a good ten minutes. As I watched her, I became very aware of the fact that she was a real girl. A very old one. An orphan who lost her family centuries ago. Who likely had her own hopes and dreams. I found myself hoping that one day we would find a way to let her live the rest of her life. Although given the state of modern medicine, optimism would be sadly unfounded. Yep, unfortunately that's the way it that's the way it went down. She was awoken and medicine had regressed. They couldn't help her at all, and she died. Very unfounded. Yep. I was just thinking the same thing, Hene. Even after she was brought back to life by the machine, she did not actually awaken, going from a near-dead state to merely sleeping. She looked very peaceful. I tried not to disturb her too badly when I took a small sample of her blood. Still, she started to open her eyes, mumbling quietly. I... I did? Wait, what? Who are you? She asked. Go back to sleep, little one, I said, touching her face gently. It's not time to wake up yet. All right, she murmured, and she closed her eyes again. I don't remember this at all. Whoa, okay, so I guess... Because she... I guess being awoken out of such a long sleep and being awake for such a small amount of time, she just didn't remember. Like It's like a dream, you know? You know, sometimes if you wake up from a dream during the night and then you go back to sleep, you totally forget that you actually woke up. I guess it was like that. I suddenly felt guilty, and quickly put her back into the freeze where she belonged. It is justifiable, of course. She remains unharmed and will continue to rest peacefully. I doubt you will think of it as anything more than a brief dream. And regardless of any discomfort I caused that poor child, proving my hypothesis may be necessary for ensuring that society thrives until the future where she might awaken. Ah, well, it was for a good cause, so I don't mind. Yeah, it sounds like it didn't hurt you, so no big deal. Afterwards, I rescued my brave husband and let my grandparents pester me about our family plans instead. I did not mind talking to them, and they discussed things more freely than the usual tone at large family gatherings. I was very alarmed to discover just how badly even the main branch had been doing over the past couple years. Losing the counselorship and therefore nobility status has had a great impact on everyone, not just me, although I still feel my situation is worse. I guess things were rough for everyone, huh? It's what it sounds like, man. 
I feel my situation is worse. I mean, she's a freaking scientist. And it seems like she's a scientist and her husband is, I assume, uh, a cook, a chef. And they're struggling? I'm, I'm assuming they're struggling with money. So what the hell? A family that's made up of a scientist and a chef should not be struggling. They should be doing very, very well. Those are good jobs. Those are really good jobs. Hopefully, however, that situation will only be temporary. If the data received from analyzing the Pale Bride's blood sample supports my theory, and I'm confident it will, it should give it enough strength that I will be taken seriously again. Things may not improve in the short term, but they will, eventually. Of this, I have confidence. She says that, but in the end, the future refused to improve. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's go back to all of this political bullshit. 41, 39, 38. Okay, 38. Chief Counselor. Oh, this is what Mute and Smith and Seo Young were talking about. Wait, what do you mean? Oh god, it's gonna be another one of these. These are gonna be fun. Alright, it's him. He's a former chief counselor of the Magungwa. Yep. Okay. Smith. Let's not waste any time getting to the biggest order of business for today, deciding on my successor for the position of chief counselor. Lee. Point of order before we continue. Will you be stepping down as counselor of state at the same time? Smith. Yes. Considered a complete retirement from politics. Lee. Who will be taking your position then? Smith. Smith in Chol will be taking it. I trust there are no objections to this. Do I have a picture? No. Note, Smith in Chol is the eldest son of Chief Counselor Smith. Okay, so his eldest son. Got it. Smith. Good. Moving on. Are there any nominations from the floor for a new Chief Counselor? Mute. I'd like to nominate the Counselor of Captaincy for the position. Right? That's him, the one that's malleable, right? The first emperor of the new dynasty was born Ryu Hyun... Hyun Su. Yep. That's the one that's going to be a patsy, right? Just a pawn. Kim. Wait, what? Counselor Kim, I don't think sh he got along well with Mute. He was the counselor of engineering. Oh. Counselor Lee. Yang. Seconding the lovely counselor of securities nomination for Ryu. Lee, at the risk of being... I... I don't know what that word is. Gosh? Gotche? I, I don't know. Seconding my nomination. Smith, are there any others? Cho, nope. Kim, I'm nominating myself. Smith, is there a second for Counselor Kim? Mute? Well, this is kind of an awkward silence. <laughs> Kim, really? Counselor... <laughs> Wait... Milkwood to milk Toast, what? Can get himself seconded, but not someone who actually runs something important? Milkwood Toast? What the fuck? Who are you talking about? Is that... Hold on. Milkwood Toast? Who's, whose name are you making fun of? Him? Milk and... To what? I, I don't get the joke. Yeah, okay. Ryu. Counselor Milku Toast? Mute. Okay, you're not going to call out that as out of order? Seriously? Smith. Yes, it's out of order. Mute. Let the record, indi let the record indicate that the Chief Counselor's remarks were prefixed by an overly dramatic sigh. <sighs> wow, I always thought politics would be more civil. No kidding. Jesus. Lee. This is getting awfully out of control. Smith. Counselor Kim. Do you withdraw the remarks? Kim. No. I want to know what could possibly motivate anyone to nominate that man for the single highest position on the ship. Lee. It is an admittedly curious decision. Decision. Obviously, I'm not completely unbiased here, but I don't think he has a track record to support such a position. Yang. We've actually... Counselor of Justice, really friendly to mute, okay. Smith. Counselor mute, if you would. Mute. Yeah, of course. I'll be blunt right... I'll be blunt. Right now, the most important thing to be con uh, to the continued stability of the ship is in how we deal with President Park 
and this idiotic democracy movement. <laughs> idiotic democracy movement. That about says it all, right? Can you say political problems? Yep. I mean, everyone agrees with that, yeah? Therefore, our job is to undermine his actions at every turn, right? Again, nobody's arguing with that, are they? Kim, how is electing Ryu as chief counselor going to do that? How is it not going to send a stronger message to have someone with an established record? Oh, I also don't under understand the reasoning. Mute. Simple. We don't want to look like the president is our enemy. If we strongly oppose him, we only make the movement stronger. Stronger. Counselor Lee, tell me, what's your proposed new direction for the council? I don't propose a new direction. I don't want to... I don't believe in compromising to hooligans. We need to draw a line that firmly lets the peasantry know that the High Council of the Magungwa won't yield to their arrogance. More importantly, one that assures the noble families that actually run the ship that we won't hang them out to dry. Mute. I don't disagree with the principles. I don't like compromises either. Counselor Ryu, I'll hand this over to you. Ryu. It's simple. We don't compromise. It's no new direction. It's the same direction as always. We protect the best interests of the ship and maintain the social order that's worked for centuries. Inside this room, nothing changes. Kim. Then what was Counselor Mute going on about? Ryu. Inside this room, nothing changes. Outside, we're the face of reform. We're the best friend of the average man who got so excited to elect President Park. President Park will propose whatever nonsense he'll propose and we'll say, yes, of course, we'll do that. With some changes, but we're just as interested in reform as you. But inside this room, nothing changes. Mute. And that's how it's done, boys and girls. Efficient and subtle. That's why Counselor Ryu is perfect. He doesn't have an established track record. We put him as chief counselor. And he says he believes in reform. They're not going to be able to... Uh, and he says he believes in reform, they're not going to be able to argue with that. Lee. Interesting. Mute. Come on, Counselor Lee. Right. She sure keeps bringing up her age, doesn't she? Wait, what do you mean? Mute. Come on, Counselor Lee. Surely you can see that this is what's appropriate for the moment? Like, under any other circumstance, you'd know I'd happily vote for you. Believe me, I've... I've not safeguarded this ship's security for 1600 years just to hand it over to a bunch of fools, okay? But... but you know. Sometimes you give them the stick, sometimes you give them the carrot. Right now, we need the carrot. Yang. Then we poison the carrot. <laughs> this it sounds like a... <laughs> Yang sounds like really immature, like an immature kid. Like, blurting out ideas that sound super clever. Then we poison the carrot! You know, like the, the one that no one takes seriously and everyone just kind of ignores? That's what I just got from when he said, then we poison the carrot. Mute. Yeah, sure, whatever. That's some kind of metaphor. But you see my point, Counselor. Lee. Who else stands with you? Counselor Yang? Counselor Ryu? Anyone else? Smith. Strongly. It's why I'm stepping down. The High Council needs a new face. A real new face. Not simply the old established uh, establishment figures the peasantry already hates. Cho. It's a good argument. This is uh, kind of boring, honestly. It is both boring and also freaking horrible. To think of the implications of this. But it is pretty boring, I have to admit. Lee. In that case, it doesn't look like anyone else is likely to get the six-vote supermajority needed, then is it? Alright, Counselor Ryu. I hope the Chief Counselor's faith in you isn't misplaced. I withdraw my nomination. Kim. Really? Cho. As a point of order, is long past the point where we usually take a break. Smith. Is that a motion for a recess? Cho. Yes. Lee. I'll second that. Smith. Very well. We'll reconvene in one hour. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, God. Please don't make me read more of that. That was incredibly boring, but also horrible. Anyway. Well, I guess we're going to see how they do these reforms. Or rather, don't. Later on. It goes from 38, and these are probably from after the election. 39, 41, 42. Alright, I'm going to continue, but before I do that, I will be right back. Alright, I have returned. Let's continue with Motherhood Credit Act. So Ryu was chief counselor by then, I guess. Yep. <clears throat> 
Oh god, it's gonna be another one of these. In fact, I think they're all gonna be just like this. Ryu. Next on the list, the proposed Motherhood Credit Act. I'm tabling this one myself. You can find the text of the act in the 10th appendix, appendix of the session's agenda, as well as relevant charts and data in the 11th through 15th. Yang. We're sure burning through appendices fast. Ryu. My apologies, I'll try to keep this one concise. Concise, then, since I know you've all read this one anyway. We're approaching a serious demographic problem right now. Birth rates ship-wide ship have been declining for years. The plan, simply put, is to provide an economic incentive for families to raise children. Lee. Exactly what, so what sort of numbers are you proposing? I feel like I'm being buried underneath a giant pile of data. How much is this credit for? Ryu. Nothing's been buried. It's just thoroughness. Lee. Lots of bickering. Yeah, no kidding. Chief Counselor Smith wouldn't have allowed an item to be introduced with four appendices. Ryu. They've been available beforehand for months. Kim. I haven't read them either. <laughs> Lee. I've read them. It's just unclear. What are the actual numbers? Ryu. <clears throat> and really boring economics type stuff. Yep. It's a complex breakdown with a number of factors. The bottom line, though, is that it will average to uh, 20,000 silver for noble families per year and 5,000 silver for peasant families per year. I don't... I don't have anything to compare it against to really know how much that is. Hmm. Let the record show that Councillor Lee just let out a long whistle, which I'm seconding. Those are big numbers. That those were mute. Yang, I don't object on principle, but I would like an assurance that this isn't going to impact my department's budget. It's already stretched thin. Kim, everybody's stretched thin. Mute. The projection makes it seem like it's going to have a significant cost attached to it. Like, I'm not opposed either. I get the benefits. It's just, you know, the stability I worry about. Ryu. Counselor Smith, if you would. Smith. Right. There's no question that this will be costly. We're looking for long-term results, but certainly this is not a project that can be sustained in the long term. If you look at Appendix 14, you'll see that the projected cost for the next 10 years will require a 15% tax increase. Ouch. Mute. Uh, that's a lot. Smith. How however, the projection also shows that with the estimated population increase, and uh, this is being conservative, don't worry, we'll see an even payout after about 22 years. Then a significant increase. Lee. How does that work? Smith. Appendix 15 is a report by the Mgungwa University Department of Economics. You'll find that it explains thoroughly. Lee. Certainly, Counselor, but humor me. How does it work? Smith. Well, uh, basically, when the population goes up, it means the workforce increases, which means there's more people to do more jobs, so there's an increase in tax revenue overall. But a decrease in government labor costs, which is always the pain in the ass. Pretty much. Lee. Really? Smith. I'm sure the Council of Education will vouch for the quality of the university's findings. Oh. Uh, yes, of course. I'll stand by it. Lee. Very well, then. Mute. Okay, here's my problem. If you increase taxes on the lower class by 15%, there will be riots. Like, my office will be on fire within a week. And it turns out that costs even more of the money that's already tight to put out. We're talking actual straight-out riots. It's a security problem. Right, you. But the benefit would be... Mute. I get what the benefit would be. Uh, it just doesn't offset the cost of, you know, offices on fire. Cho. More workers would be a pretty good thing, though. Ryu. Are you really going to exercise the security veto over this? Smith. <clears throat> if I may, a possible solution might be to offload the tax increase onto the noble classes. Exactly! In fact, I was assuming these were about the noble classes to begin with. And when they said that it's for the lower classes, it just came across as absurd. Tax the people that you're going to help? Uh, tax the people that need the help the most. To help them with... Get more money? Like, what? Take money from the people you're trying to give it to? What? That, uh, that makes no sense at all. <laughs> Let me guess. It's not going to be received well. Kim. This is a terrible idea. Just to hell with the whole act, I say. Mute. No, it's a good idea. 
Peasants off having children is something I am all for. Peasants raising happy families do not set fire to anything. To be perfectly clear, I'm very much in favor of the not setting fire to things option. Okay. Lee. The Council of Security may be over-dramatizing a little. Ryu. Don't sound so certain. We need to find... Some sort of consolation for the refusal to carry out President Park's insane school credit idea. Uh, okay, so I see he's already proposed reforms and they've shut it down. This just addresses a serious social issue as well as undercuts Park. If it's not this, it'll have to be something else. <clears throat> Kim, I don't care. I'm not voting for any act that'll require a tax increase, let alone one supported by noble families alone. Yang, yes, me neither. Lee, this is certainly going nowhere fast. Ryu, Counselor Smith, Smith, yeah, Ryu. I'm sure someone can be changed. Uh, something can be changed to address the counselor's concerns, right? Smith, well, uh, we could probably just take the funding from the surplus. It'll all bounce out in the end anyway. I don't. Um, I didn't think to submit any numbers on that though. Ryu, assuming the counselor of state is correct and no new taxes were levied on either the peasantry or noble class, would anyone object? Mute. It'd be okay by me. Lee. Assuming the Council of State is correct? No, there would be no objection. Kim. Yes, fine, whatever, I don't care. Yang. I would have no problem. Cho. What they all said. Ryu. Great. Councillor Smith, please provide a new report on the feasibility of surplus financing for the Motherhood Credit Act. The item is tabled until then. Moving on. Well, that was boring as shit. <laughs> I have to admit, that is boring. There's something I want to talk to you about. Yeah, what is it, Yane? Sorry to get all suddenly serious on you, but... I feel really weird reading some of these logs. What do you mean? It's just, especially reading about relationships, I get a very adult feeling from them. What? Ad adult feel? What do you mean? Really, it's hard, isn't it? And all this politics stuff, it's just so far above my head. It's hard to admit, but there's just so many things I don't understand at all. I mean, I'm over 600 years old, but I feel like such a child reading some of these things. Yeah, I guess she wouldn't have... yeah. She's been around for a long time, but there's something she just doesn't know anything about. I like the idea of following my childhood dreams, being an engineer like my real father. But now I'm reading about someone like Kim So Yi and how hard it was for her, despite being really smart and having a job and a supportive husband and science on her side. I know, I was thinking the same thing. How can they be having a hard time? Given the field that she works in. Given the field that they both work in. And it just makes me think. If even someone like her could barely deal with being a responsible working adult, what hope does someone like me have? It's hopeless, isn't it? I'll never be a functional adult like like them, will I? <laughs> He'd say probably not. That would be so mean. Wow. I... Hmm. Well, I, I just, I don't know. I don't, I have no idea. How is she going to be a real person, an AI who was a real person and then turned into an AI and is maybe going to be put into a real body? How, she, becoming an adult? I, I, <laughs> I'm kind of in, kind of in unexplored territory here, but, but there's one thing that I do know. Jene, I believe in you. You do? Oh, I knew there was a reason why I fell in love with you. Thank you so much for saying that. I'm sure with someone as wonderful as you by my side, I can learn how to be in a real adult relationship too. I can always learn how. And I guess the first step is to try to understand, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Very well, let's get back to reading these logs then. I'm going to do my best to try to understand the things that they keep talking about. I'm sure I can, if I try. Well, don't worry about the pol political stuff too much, because even I barely understand it. It's mind-numbing. Ugh. Alright, new message. What is this? Please do not ignore... what? Who? Mr. Sung Lee. Who's Sung Lee? I don't like this. Hmm. Star Union Bank. 
Marimbrum Branch Luna. Hello. Hey, why, hey, why is there a space between hello and the comma? I don't... Th mm. This is a Nigerian spammer, isn't it? I don't trust it. It's turning out with bad grammar. Nope, delete. Delete. Delete message. Okay, fine. Let me start by introducing myself. Miss... What the f... Wait a minute, this is, this is, isn't it? I was joking when I said that, but I think this actually is. Look at this. Introduce myself, there's no space. Mr. Sung Lee, no space. Credit officer of the Star Union Bank. I do insist in your confidence in this transaction. I am making this contact with you, based on reliable information available to me, courtesy of Internet Business Index, and confirmed by my local chambers of commerce and industry concerning your reputation. <laughs> Thus, I am convinced you would be capable of providing me the solution to a money transfer... <laughs> Money transfer transaction of 43,600,000 Union credits. Yeah, this... Wow. You shall receive 25% of the funds to be transferred, and 10% will be set aside for all expenses. Kindly delete this email if it does not suit your personal or business ethics, and I will gladly... Uh, as I will gladly appreciate, yours faithfully, Mr. Sung Lee. Mr. Sung Lee, you don't exist. Go fuck yourself. Although if you don't exist, then I guess you can't fuck yourself. But please... Even though you don't exist, attempt to fuck yourself. Okay? Alright, thanks. Goodbye. Nice talking with you, Mr. Sungli. Alright, where were we? Oh yes, boring political crap. Gotta slog through it, gotta do it. It'll be over soon. Don't worry, don't worry. <clears throat> Alright. 41, 42, 43. Alright, well I know where I start. Nobility stipend amendment. Uh, when was the last one I just read from? Which one did I just read? It was the... Hold on, let me find it. Wait, where is it? Wait, where is it? I... Ah, whatever. I was trying to figure out how close it was to the last message I read, but... Anyway. Let me get that back to unread only, because it's much more pleasant to look at. There we go. All right, let's go for year 41. Nobility stipend amendment. Great, another one of these. Ryu, oh god. <laughs> Ryu. Next on the agenda is proposed amendment to the Consolidation of the Noble Class Act. I am tabling this one personally. You can find the relevant text in the 8 appendix. It's short. It's just filling the loophole in how the nobility stipend is distributed. I've mentioned this before. Kim. Can we keep this one short so we can get to the part of the agenda that's important? Mute. Well, I can't believe I'm saying this, but what Counselor Kim said... Wow, Mute's actually agreeing with Kim. Okay, that's rare. Smith. I'll just read out the entire text of the amendment. The nobility stipend will only be distributed by patrilineal family lines as officially registered and not paid twice to married couples. I can't recall seeing any report on this ever. Is it really a widespread problem? Ryu. Are you saying we should let people break the spirit of the rules just because it's not widespread? Lee. This does sound an awful lot like... P pedantry? Did I just pronounce that pedantry? Smith. All right. Sorry. Withdrawn. Ryu. Does anyone object to this, or can we have the vote and move on? Ryu. Let the record indicate that there were no objections, and therefore a vote will be automatically called. How does the council vote? Kim. Fine. The Council of Engineering and Science is in favor. O. Oh. In favor. Mute. In favor of moving on. <laughs> Yang. In favor. Lee. In favor. Smith. In favor, I guess. Cho. In favor. Ryu, in favor... Wow. I don't really get why this is important either. Neither do I. Ryu, in favor. Ryu. The amendment passes unanimously. Right? Moving on to the main topic of the agenda. Okay, something tells me the fact that this is included. Even though it might seem pointless, there's probably a very good point to it. Only be distributed by patrilineal family lines as officially registered and not paid twice to married couples. I, I, don't, I don't know what that means. I don't even know what patrilineal family lines means. What's patrilineal? Lineal is lineage, line, family line. Patra is... Uh, I don't remember. Anyway, it'll probably make sense later. Alright, 42, Meritocracy Act, day 9. Wait, is this the ninth day of discussing the Meritocracy Act? It must be a pretty contentious act, then. Alright. She's so much cursing, even in politics. Really? This should be interesting. Okay, Ryu. 
Let's formally begin day nine of debate on the Meritocracy Act. Oh my god, day nine? Jesus. Mute. Is there any hope of this being the last day? Ryu. Unless this council really is the, quote, shit show, unquote, that President Park claims it to be. There shouldn't be any surprises. Everybody should be on the same page. Everyone had, well, better be on the same page. Wait, the shit show that President Park claims it to be. Okay, so Park is not ignorant of what's happening, I guess. I mean, I don't know if he knows that he was selected, uh, that he was accepted on purpose to try to quell unrest. But he obviously knows that they're not getting anything done. Oh, are we really going to have the word shit show in the council records? Mute. Yeah, it's hopeless. Three more years of debate. Can't wait. Lee, if we could focus, please. Please. <clears throat> Ryu, I understand that several counselors have amendments they'd like to table. Oh, very well. Please refer to Appendix 201 for the text of it. Two, 201? What? Oh my god. Kim, unintelligible. Ryu, order. Please continue, Counselor O. <laughs> I guess uh, Kim cursed or something. Oh, it states essentially that the meritocracy exams will be run exclusively by a committee chaired by the president of Mgungwa University. Composed entirely of current existing nobles and that no person currently standing on the council will solicit or engage in any improper relationship with a member of the meritocracy committee with the purpose of falsifying exam results under penalty of essentially being barred from the exam. Yeah, what? H hold on, let me take a drink and read that again. Okay. Meritocracy exams. Will be run by a committee chaired by the president of the Mgungwa University current nobles only, no persons currently standing on the council, so no one from here will solicit or engage in any improper relationship with a member of the meritocracy committee with the purpose of falsifying exam results under penalty of being barred from the exam. What is the meritocracy exam, though? I don't remember. Have they mentioned it before? <clears throat> is that the language exam or something? I don't even know what meritocracy means. It, it sounds like something related to, with like, maritime. Like, maritime law? Isn't it like ship law? It, I mean, these aren't boats in the water, but it is a type of ship. So meritocracy exam, is that like an exam for captaincy? I'm guessing it is. Maritime, meritocracy, it sounds like ship. Yeah. Okay, mute. Wait, what? What does it even mean? <laughs> you read my thoughts, and her thoughts. Yane's thoughts, everyone, yeah, we don't get it, what the hell? Oh, nothing. Lee. The definition of improper relationship seems to be impossible for a family member to fulfill, is that correct? Oh, that's correct. Mute. So it's functionally useless, then. Oh, again, that's accurate. Mute. Great, I love it. Function Functionally useless is the best kind of function. Smith, uh, then what's the point? Ryu. The point is, my entire goal proposing the Meritocracy Act was to create the appearance of radical change that's consistent with what President Park has proposed in a way that won't actually change the status quo. And we're back to this, goddammit. Yang. Well, that won't change the status quo, except for hanging anyone but the eight families here out to dry. Kim. Oh no, not this again. What the hell, Counselor Yang? Who really cares about the nobility status of the Kang or Han families? They're not here. Mute. Like, I get the concern. It feels like betraying nobles for the sake of peasants. And I don't like it either, okay? But this is pretty clearly the best way out of this problem. Ryu. We could stand to lose some dead weight anyway. Smith. I don't really like the tone of that. Mute. Man, what happened to no surprises? Lee. We've been here for nine days. Has it not been made clear that there are bigger concerns than tone, Counselor Smith? Ryu. I would think your primary concern is what we're able, uh, is that we're able to pass a budget, Counselor. Smith. Yeah, it is. Ryu. Are there any objections to including Counselor O's amendment to the act? Smith. Only moral ones. Ryu. Counselor. Smith. Sorry, strike that statement from the record? No. Ryu, then the amendment is added to the act. Who else has an addition? Kim. Oh, well, all right. Wait, what? Kim, I want to add an amendment that requires a member of each department to certify the exams. Various counselors' indiscernible interjections. <laughs> well, he threw a wrench into the works. Ryu, order, there will be order. Ryu. Thank you. What happened to no surprises? Don't do this, counselor. Mute. 
I'd like you to second the motion for Counselor Kim not to do this to us. <laughs> Kim, why don't you... Don't you want to make so... Ryu, it's unnecessary and transparent. Lee, the purpose of the act is to be subtle, and that is hardly consistent with subtle. The rules effectively allow Magungwa University to ensure that as is. Anyway. Mute. Let's just move on right now, okay? Kim, fine. Ryu. Are there any other amendments any counselors wish to table? Cho. Yeah, actually, I do. Lee. It's co-authored by us. The text can be found in... Appendices... Appendices... Appendices or Appendices? 191 to 192. The proposal is for all meritocracy exams to be broken into several brackets and for the counselor position to be awarded to the oldest member of the top bracket. Jesus. Mute. Uh, does that really make a difference? Cho. Yeah, absolutely. Lee. It's simply to ensure that someone can't take over position just by scouring a few points better than one of us. There's some smart kids in my family. I'd rather not the position be lost to them just because of two points of difference, for instance. Mute. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Ryu. Any objections? Ryu. The item is added to the fact. Uh, the act, then. Any other proposed amendments? Ryu. No. Lee. Could it be that the end is finally in sight? Mute. Finally, after 10,000 years of debate, it's time to vote. Harsh. Yeah, no kidding. But true. Ryu, it's about time. How does the council vote on the Amendment Act? Mute. In favor. Lee, in favor. Kim. I still think this is a terrible idea, but in favor. Smith. In favor, but uh, let's the record show I'm not comfortable with it either. Okay. Cho, in favor. Yang, in favor. Ryu, in favor. Ryu. The Meritocracy Act passes unanimously after nine year uh, days of debate. That concludes the agenda for this session. I'm personally going to motion to pro... Wait, what? I'm personally going to motion to prorogue? Prorogue? What the f What the hell is prorogue? Council until after exams are conducted. Is that a word? Okay, prorogue. As soon as the act is signed by the president. Mute. As soon as it's signed, and as soon as the smug jerk has choked on his shit show crack. <laughs> Lee, I'll second the chief counselor's motion. <clears throat> Ryu, assuming the act is signed with no problems, we'll reconvene after the meritocracy exam results are confirmed. Mute. See you in three months, then. Ryu, let's go home, counselors. Council is dismissed. Still don't really get it. Yeah, I... I don't... I'm missing something. I'm missing a lot of things. There's something going on behind the scenes. And I'm missing it. Okay, one more. And I don't think this is a council thing. In fact, it's about a bribery, which sounds far more interesting than all the stuff I just read. The most extravagant bribery. Counselor Tay. Who's Tay? I guess the Ryu family house never really changed much. No photo. Oh, first time. Alright. Dear Counselor... Cho Chin Yong. I had the utmost pleasure of being invited to Ryu Kuang Su's home to discuss business with the man. You were right. When one of the Ryu family wants to get you in their pocket, they sure don't fuck around about it. It's by far the most extravagant form of bribery I've ever witnessed. I'm pretty surprised that it's his brother that's the chief counselor, not him. Because he seems a hell of a lot bolder to me. Are all the are all the council noble families like this? Because holy shit, I could sure get used to being in these ranks. He briefly mentioned a possible deck space deal over drinks, but mostly the evening was filled with gesturing. Hell of a job with the gesturing, though. I thought he couldn't get any crazier than when he casually mentioned busting out some vintage 4,000 wine. But when he did, instead of just some regular household servant delivering it, he got Hyo A. Chong herself. Oh, shit. Ah, that. So. So Ryu Kuang Su, that was the person that she got, uh, that, that become, became her patron. Hmm. Okay. I saw her a couple times at the Eternity before it closed down, and she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life, pretty much. Loved her performances, and she just saunters out casually, uncorks a 40-year-old bottle, and kneels down like a common maid to pour it for us. It was unbelievable. How humiliating. No kidding, Jesus. After... Oh, fuck. <sighs> 
Then she sang for us, which I'd never heard before. Needless to say, her voice was as entrancing and beautiful as you'd expect, and the wine was just as smooth. Her performance went on for about half an hour, singing about, well, the usual things, lost love, the passage of time, that sort of sentimental shit. The theater's slogan was playful elegance, and holy shit, does she still embody that. It's a guilty pleasure, but I can't say that her singing about past romances isn't emotionally affecting. It haunts your soul. I'm pretty envious of Ryu, that he can apparently just hear that kind of performance whenever he wants, like it's no big deal. Gross. Wait, wait, what? What am I about to read? Anyway, she sat down next to me, with her legs brushing against mine, and kept pouring me more wine. I mean, I'm not stupid. I know that Ryu is just trying to seduce me with that kind of treatment. He just wants me to imagine how impressive their bribe must be. And that was the point where he mentioned the possibility of getting my family some deck space that's more spacious than where we were before. Like, maybe even with a window to the stars. That's a romantic thought. That's for damn sure. God, I'm just thinking about her. Hyo A. Chong. Just... Oh, fuck. Thinking of her just kind of trapped with him, a person she doesn't really care about. His servant. With all of her skills before. And her love. Just... Dead. Ugh. <sighs> I got a chance to talk to A. Chong while Ryu was in the can. Mostly I just used the opportunity to gush about how, how big a fan I was of hers. She was very gracious in listening to me. Oh, oh fuck. I like that hairpin you have, I told her. It's very bold. Oh my god. Oh, this? It's rather ugly, wouldn't you say? She said with a delightful laugh. But I promised my first love that I'd hold on to it. She kept the hairpin. Please, please tell me they got back together. I mean, Jesus. Oh, that's so, it's so sweet and so sad. She kept the hairpin. Oh. I teared up just when she mentioned it. Oh, come on, please. Ah. Oh. I don't... I don't want to get my hopes up, though. Because I don't think many of these stories, if any of them, are going to have a happy ending. But still, please, I want them to be together. Then, Ryu came back in the room, and we talked about our days at Magungwe University. He wanted to know what things were like nowadays, and I was pretty happy to oblige with stories from my undergraduate studies. At the end of the evening, he said he'd save discussing business for next time, and that he wanted to hear more stories about his old professors. I'm not stupid enough to think that he's interested in any legitimate friendship, but if this is what my counselor, uh, my council vote is worth, man, I'll take it. They really do not do things by half measures. With regards, Counselor Tay. All right, that's it. I believe I can get one more block of text, and then I think that's it for the power for the day. Yeah, 19% power. Yep. All right, let's grab some more.